If you made it past chapter 4 on market structures, then congratulations. We will be starting on a new chapter today, and it's a chapter on market for factors. And factors here actually refers to factors of production. Now, this is going to be a relatively short video because um, I believe the concepts can be delivered in a very straightforward manner. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very simple model to explain how the market for factor works. Okay, so we're going to assume that um, firms are perfectly competitive, all right, uh, and they are non monopsonous And what this means is that um, they are not the only hirer in the labor market. Okay, so we're actually talking about labor down here. Okay, uh, labor is going to be our focus for this video. And also, there's going to be some short run and long run analysis. And just to remind you, in the short run, the capital of the firm is fixed, and in the long run, the capital can be more flexible. Okay, so our job over here is to actually um, analyze how do firms demand for factors. Okay, that will be the focus of this video. How do firms demand for labor? Okay, we've seen how consumers demand for goods. Now we need to see how the firms demand for labor. Okay, so we're going to begin with the profit maximization problem. And the profit function is given as the price multiplied by the quantity minus um, the cost of labor and the cost of capital. So P over here is price and it is said to be exogenous which means is that it is determined by external factors. Why? Because this is a perfectly competitive market, right? So the firms have got no control over the price whatsoever. Okay, so that's P. Now Q over here, uh, actually Q bracket L comma K refers to the production function and over here, um, in order to build anything, to build any goods, you're going to need labor and capital, right? And that is why uh, the production function here is a function of labor and capital at the same time. So W over here refers to the nominal wage, okay? When I say nominal, I'm talking about in dollar form. L here refers to the amount of labor, R is the interest rate, and K obviously refers to capital. All right, so now that we have explained the profit function, let's look at the short run. In the short run, capital is fixed. Therefore, the firm would have to maximize its profit with respect to labor, only labor. It can only choose the amount of labor in the short run, right? It can't choose how much capital it wants to have. So I'm gonna differentiate this function with respect to labor, and we're gonna get the price multiplied by the marginal product of labor minus the nominal wage equals to zero. So MPL here refers to the marginal product from labor, and it refers to the additional um, goods okay, or products uh, from adding an additional unit of labor into your production. Okay, So um, I can actually summarize this into the marginal product from labor is equals to the nominal wage divided by price. And the nominal wage divided by the price actually gives me uh, this thing called the real wage. Okay, So what the real wage means to the worker is that this is its purchasing power. We've talked about this in chapter two. To the firm, it actually refers to the quantity of goods that one worker is worth. So what does that mean? If you're gonna pay me $1,000 to produce a soap bars that cost $2 to sell, uh, that, that, that people sell for $2, uh, what that means is that I'm actually worth 500 bars of soap. So that is what I'm worth to you, right? If you hire me for $1,000, that's it. And you're running a soap company. Okay, so now, the question is, is there a curve for marginal product of labor? Well, yes, well, there's almost a curve for everything. As long as in maths, you can have a curve for anything. Just that some curves don't look very nice, but um, this one is pretty okay. So just like marginal cost, you derive it from your total cost, right? So to derive a marginal product, you need to look at the total product curve. So on the horizontal axis, you got the amount of labor, and on the vertical axis, you've got a total product. As you can see, this is actually the inverse of the total cost function, right? It's the inverse, okay? It means it's, it, it's curving at opposite places, all right? So on the left side of the middle, this is where you have increasing returns to scale, and where it starts to flatten out, that's actually your decreasing returns to scale. So how are we going to derive our marginal product uh, of labor? Well, I think you should be pretty good at this already. So we know that 
to derive anything marginal, you basically take the tangents of the graph and then you're going to measure the gradient of it, right? So you'll notice that it's going to be a curve that looks like this. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials and exam solutions in the form of videos which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.